Welcome back to Dr. Finance. This is a paper written by Gerard Debreu, who won the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1983. This is what he published in Econometrica uh, 1951, titled The Coefficient of Resource Utilization. A numerical evaluation of the dead loss associated with a non-optimal situation in the Pareto sense of an economic system is sought. Use is made of the intrinsic price system associated with optimal situations of whose existence a non-calculus proof is given. A coefficient of resource utilization yielding measures of the efficiency of the economy is introduced. The treatment is based on vector set properties in the commodity space. Introduction. The activity of the economic system we study can be viewed as the transformation by N production units and the consumption by M consumption units of L commodities. The quantities of which may or may not be perfectly divisible. Each consumption unit, say the ith one, is assumed to have a preference ordering of its possible consumptions and therefore an index of its satisfaction. Uh, <clears throat> SI, which uh, each production unit has a set of possibilities depending, for example, on technological knowledge defined indef independently of the limitation of physical resources and of conditions in the consumption sector. Finally, the total net consumption of all consumption units and all production units for each commodity can be at most equal to the available quantity of this commodity. If we impose on the economic system the constraints defined by one, the set of possibilities of each production unit, and two, the limitation of physical resources, we cannot identify increase, in that indefinitely increase, the M satisfactions. In trying to do so, we would find situations where it is impossible to increase any satisfaction without making at least one other one decrease. In any one of these situations, all the resources are fully exploited and it can be considered optimal. When a situation is non-optimal, it is, uh, is uh, when the situation is non-optimal, is it possible to find some measure of the loss involved, include, indicating how far it is from being optimal? The basic difficulty comes from the fact that no meaningful metrics exists in the satisfaction space. For this reason, we take up the following dual problem. We impose on the economic system the constraints defined by one, the set of possibilities of each production unit, and two, the condition that for each consumption unit, the satisfaction S sub i is at least as uh, at least equal to a given value S sub i sub zero. We cannot decrease indefinitely the L quantities of available physical resources. In trying to do so, we would find situations where it is impossible to decrease one of them without making at least one other one increase. In any one of this, these situations, the prescribed levels of satisfaction have been attained with at, as small an amount of physical resources as possible, and it can be considered optimal. The loss associated with a non-optimal situation is now a measure of the distance from the actually available complex of resources to the set of optimal complexes. This concept is far simpler 
than the former one because we are dealing now with quantities of commodities. The two definitions of optimality are equivalent if the situation cases are excluded. Using the second definition of optimality, we proceed to a non-calculus proof of the intrinsic existence of price system associated with the optimal complexes of physical resources. The basic theorem of the new welfare economics, the, this, this proof is more general than the usual ones since it does not require the existence of derivatives which indeed do not exist in simple and realistic cases. More complete, set it, uh, since it deals with, more complete, since it deals with global instead of local properties of maximum, maxima or minima, more concise as the synthetic nature of the problem requires it to be, it gives a deeper explanation of the intrinsic existence of prices by its geometric interpretation in the commodity space. These reasons seem to justify the higher level of abstraction on which it is placed. This proof is based on convexity properties which imply continuity of quantities of commodities. If this assumption of con continuity is dropped, the same technique shows that to achieve an optimal situation, the use of a real or virtual price system is still sufficient, but no longer necessary. We are now prepared to measure the distance from the actually given complex of physical resources to the set of optimal complexes, i.e. the minimum of the distance from the given complex to a varying optimal complex. To evaluate such a distance, we multiply for each commodity the difference between the available quantity and the optimal quantity by the price derived from the intrinsic price system whose existence has been previously proved. We take the sum of all such expressions for all commodities and we divide by a price index in order to eliminate the arbitrary multiplicative factor affecting all the prices, it is then proved that the distance function so defined reaches its minimum for an optimal complex resulting from a re reduction of all quantities of the non-optimal complex by a ratio rho. The coefficient of resource utilization of the economic system. This number equals to equal to one if the situation is optimal, smaller than one if it is non-optimal. Measures the efficiency of the economy and summarizes the underemployment of physical resources. The technical inefficiency of production units and the efficiency of economic organization due for example to monopolies or a system of indirect taxes or tariffs the money value of the dead loss associated with a non-optimal situation can be derived from rho and the inefficiency of the economy is now described by a certain number of dollars representing the value of the physical resources which could be thrown away without preventing the achievement of the prescribed levels of satisfaction. This definition seems to obviate the shortcomings of the older ones. The theory which led to the introduction of Rho can be embedded in a more general one. Let us consider the ratio of the money value of any complex resources that allows one to achieve for each consumption unit at least s sub i sub zero to the money value of actually available resources, the price system being arbitrary. 
the antagonistic activities of a central agency which chooses the prices so as to make this ratio as large as possible and of the economic units which behave in such a way as to make it as small as possible eventually give the value rho to it this minimax interpretation of rho points out a rather striking isomorphism with the theory of statistical decision functions the end of section 9 might be useful as a supplement to this introduction by its more detailed exposition of the significance of the coefficient of resource utilization. The two most important sections are 6, where the non-calculus proof of the basic theorem of the new welfare economics is given, and 9, where rho is introduced. Section 11, which gives the minimax interpretation of rho, is a natural com complement of 9. Section 12, which brings out the isomorphism with the theory of statistical decision functions, includes an elementary and self-contained exposition of the latter. <clears throat> Thanks for listening.